Okay, so let's rewind the clock completely and uh, and tell me a little bit about how you got into tennis originally. So um, I was eight years old and my parents, so I, I'm the first or the oldest of five brothers. So I've got four younger brothers. Oh, wow. So big Your family. Poor mother. And poor mother. I think she, she must have been trying for a girl and it, um, yeah, it didn't, <laughs> I think she gave up after five boys. But um, yeah, so I was the first and, and at eight years old, I was fairly sporty. I'd do a bit of everything. And um, one summer, my parents saw this advert for a summer camp and I went along to a, a tennis camp and loved it and started playing once a week um that kind of progressed and probably by the time I was 10 I was getting quite good and, and started you know increasing the, the amount that I played and quite rapidly got into some matches and, and did well and played some tournaments and got some wins and yeah by the time I was probably 13 14 I was thinking well, actually tennis is is what I want to do and I, and I kind of knew at that age that it was going to be kind of a lifelong love you know for the sport so um Luckily, at school, I managed to get um, an afternoon off. So I got out of school early and played with some of the older academy players. And that really pushed me on. And by the time I was 16, I was finishing my kind of GCSEs and um, decided that rather than going to, to college, I would try being a tennis player. So um, for two years, between the ages of 16 and 18, I, I played full time. So in Portsmouth, um, I was playing kind of five days a week, Monday to Friday, doing kind of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. training. It would consist of a couple of hours of, you know, intense practice in the morning, an hour of strength and conditioning. We'd have a lunch break and then we'd do match play in the afternoon. Um, at the age of 16, 17, I started to compete further away. So I'd be traveling, it might be to Bolton for a British tour event or um, basically, it just got a bit more expensive with with travel and accommodation. So I started coaching to to kind of fund my way. Um, coaching gave me a little bit of of kind of pocket money to pay for the travel and the accommodation, um, but it took some of my time away from practice. So you know, I was seventeen, trying to be a tennis player, but the coaching to earn enough money to travel around it was eating into some of my practice hours which at the time was fine. And I was actually enjoying, you know, spending time with the younger kids and helping them to get better. But by the time I was 18, I kind of had to make a big decision as to whether I was going to continue to, to be a tennis player, to try to make it, or whether I was going to go down the coaching route. And I decided at the time it was a big decision, but I, I decided to become a tennis coach. And looking back at it, I think it was the best decision I made. You know, I, it would be amazing to be a professional tennis player. You know, I, I sometimes look back at the, or oh, what if, but it, it's, it's very, very, very tough. And I mean, you know, looking at some of the, my, my peers, the players that I used to play with, you know, that are still playing, they're, they're fantastic tennis players, you know, some of them are world ranked, you know, but really to make a good living, you've got to be in the top 100, maybe the top 200. And um, it's a huge sacrifice. You've got to put everything to it, you know. It's a really tough, tough balance. So yeah, anyway, so I decided to be a coach. Love it. Uh, I get to to play tennis with people every day. Um, I get out in the fresh air. I get to give back to, you know, some of the, the knowledge that I've learned over the years to other people. And it's just amazing to, to see people grow as tennis players within a sport, but actually as people as well. And, you know, what, what tennis can give to, to young children is huge with regards to life skills and being independent and learn failure and learning to, you know, be modest with when you're, when you're winning and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it, that's how I got into coaching and I've, I've never looked back and I absolutely love it. Okay, let's go back a little bit to um, when you uh, started playing tennis full-time, you said you were 16. From my knowledge of tennis, that's quite late, isn't it? It is, yeah. So, you know, you, you see so, every player's different. So you'll see some of the, the professional tennis players, you'll see people like the Williams sisters, for example, who picked up a racket from a really young age there their dad was really into it and kind of got them quite serious with tennis from a young age and they have done fantastically well. You've got other players who, um, you know, maybe, maybe more like me, they, they get into it at a slightly later age, but they continue at, to love the sport. So a, a, an interesting, I'll go back a little bit. So an interesting thing to think about. So my, I'm one of five boys. Um, I was the oldest. As we got, 
through the younger brothers because they started younger. I was eight. The next one down started when he was six. The next one down started when he was three. My parents understood the landscape of tennis more. So they, they kind of took it a bit more seriously with the younger ones. Whereas for me, it was more a bit of fun. What happened with the younger brothers was some of them, a couple of them made it to kind of national championships. One of them was national champion, uh, you know, playing internationally, really, really high, a high level than I ever played. But because they put so much time and effort into tennis at a young age, they, they burnt out uh, and they actually fell out of love of, of playing. So it's really important to get the balance right. And it depends on the player, depends on the, the child, but, you know, some children really like the challenge of playing 10 hours a week and playing competitions every single weekend and, and really, really love it. But others actually want to take a slightly more laid back approach and play lots of different sports at a younger age. And, and I encourage that. I think, you know, playing different sports can, there are lots of different you know, transferable skills. And I think you've got to get it right for the, for the player. For me, I took it less seriously at a young age and kind of got into it, as you say, a bit later at the age of kind of 14, 15, 16. But because of that, it was my it was my choice to make. You know, I wanted to push myself harder to get better. I wanted to get myself into these tournaments. Whereas at a younger age, it's almost your parents' decision that you're doing this tournament. And if you don't have the option, you kind of fall out of love of it. So I think, you know, if, I, if, if any parents are listening to this, I think it's really important to make sure that you're listening to your kids and, you know, making sure that they they are doing it. It's their choice as well and making sure that they are wanting to play more and more and more. When it gets to a stage where they don't want to do any more, take it back a step, you know, maybe drop one of your sessions a week, maybe, maybe not go to that next tournament. And just to give them a bit of a break, because at the end of the day, longevity and enjoyment is the key to becoming a good player longer term. You know, it's not like gymnastics where you've got to peak at the age of 16, 17, 18. You, you know, you've got players on the tour now that are playing at the age of 40 and still, you know, at the top level of their game. So it's such a long journey. I think you've got to, you've got to take the bigger picture into account and make sure that you are able to withstand that many years on the court and love it. Um, so, yeah, like I say, I, my younger brothers were, if you, for, better, for a better word, they were more talented than me. They, were, they had better ability at that age. They were playing to a much better level, but none of them have ever beaten me because I keep, I kept playing. Um, you know, I might not have been as technically good as them. I might not have had the same opportunities as them, but I kept playing and that's the key. 